Hello, my name's Jerry. I'm the um, resident chef here at MacArthur Centre for Sustainable Living at Mount Annan. Um, today I'm just going to show you just a little bit, a uh, couple of dishes, and what we're going to do is I'm going to do four nice healthy dishes for you people out there, uh, and easy to use dishes that you can put together at home with all the different kinds of ingredients. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do your nice easy um, bar crapple crumble, I'm going to do your really nice sultana and rice um, pudding, uh, I'm going to do a nice Salmon patties, freshly made, we're using the fresh tins. And I'm also gonna make you a nice ch uh, chicken and mushroom bake for you, okay, using a few noodles. So what we'll do, that sounds good, we'll get into it, we'll, it'll be nice food, nice tuck, and I hope you just pick it up as we're going along. Okie doke, so I'll kick off. So well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do is start with the, um, with the salmon patties. And okay, the salmon patties, all I need is I use tins of, um, Use tins, I use tins of um, pink salmon or red salmon, whatever's used, you probably have it at home. Pink salmon or red salmon, it's, everyone has that at home. I, I know I have it at home sometimes. Tuna's all right if you want to do tuna. If you've got vegetables, vegetables are great, like leftover veggies, they're fantastic. You can make them like a bubble and squeak, okay? Whatever you've got in your fridge, just check your fridge, check your cupboards. Also too, before I kick off, just make sure that you um, check your use-by dates, okay? Things can happen, um, if you don't check them, you can get sick, okay? So make sure all your food's nice and fresh. Always check your cupboards. If you've got stuff in the freezer, three months in the freezer, no longer, okay? So whatever you buy, I always buy fresh, and when I buy fresh, I use it straight away, and that way you have no problems. Canned stuff, if you've got canned stuff, it's pretty good. That's okay as well. Just make sure you check the use-by dates. And if you're not sure, ask someone, okay? When you've got other stuff like, um, f say, perishables, like milk and meat and proteins and all that stuff, just check it and buy it fresh and make sure you've got it the right way. Okay, me salmon patties. So what I've got, I've just got me salmon patties there, and it's just my... Um, my beautiful, um, it's, I've got some red salmon, and just some, I just opened a tin of red salmon, which you could have any time, and I've just put that into my bowl, right there. Okay, over here, I've got some chopped up onion, and some chopped up parsley. And that's all you need, it's okay. If you've got red onion, you've got white onion, you've got brown onion, you've got shallots, fantastic. If you're growing your own stuff, Unreal, fantastic. It's good to grow your own herbs. Woolies now do them little things. They're great, not just for the kids, they're great for us oldies as well, us seniors. Fantastic, you'd use that as well and grow it up. I'm actually growing some tomatoes and I've got some, um, I think some chives as well and they're going pretty good. So I've got that. I've got, some, I've got two fresh eggs. Put that in there as well and they come up pretty good. Now, normally I'd use my hand, but I'm gonna use my spoon today because I wanna be nice. And I just blend that all up, okay? Just blend that in. in. Sometimes if the egg doesn't um, gel with your paste, you can probably put another one in. And I'll probably put another one in anyway to make it nice. I'll probably put one more egg in. I've got them there. Any kind of eggs are good. Whatever you got, doesn't matter what size, where you, always watch your buying too. Check how your, um, check your um, specials and all that. Don't buy too much either, guys, because if you buy too much, you'll have leftovers and you'll have waste. And that, you don't want to waste money, because with waste, is cost you money, okay? So just be wary of what you're doing. Always, my first thing is, I always check what I've got at home before I do anything else. Here at the centre, we teach um, how to do little cooking workshops, and I teach how to do, eat safely, eat healthy, and I also make sure that my food is, I get it out of my cabin, out of my, my cabin or my fridge. Over here, now this is where I'm gonna use my hands now and get a bit messy. Um, so I got a bit of crumbs. Okay, I normally like to use some panko crumbs and I mix them up with some bread crumbs. Now crumbs, 
you can make your own, okay? Just all you need is your fresh old stale bread. If you've got a little chop blender food processor, whack it through there, quite good. The best way I do it, if you're using something in the oven, I just, after I finish my oven, put my bread in there, turn the oven off, leave it overnight, come back tomorrow morning, You've got nice hard bread and you can just pound it up and crush it out. Use a rolling pin or a tea towel, it's even better. Okay, that's me salmon patties. Look at that, isn't that fantastic? Oops, I nearly dropped it. <laughs> that's me salmon patties, so nice and easy. Already made up, just do that. Again, you can throw pepper and salt and all that sort of stuff in, but I always find the salmon is pretty good because the salmon's got a bit of salt in it anyway. We all need a bit of salt in our life, a bit of sugar, a bit of fat, but who cares? That's good, so long as you look after yourself. Okay, right, let's get a little plate from down here. I've got some little plates down here under my little cabinet. That's going to be my little plate. Now, all I do, I just get a good handful, right? And I just form a little, a little patty. It's nice and moist, but that's all right. I don't squeeze it. I don't squash it. I just put it in there, and that's patty number one. All right. Again, just rolling it up, nice and easy. I form it into a little ball, put my little crumbs on there, and then when I've got my crumbs in there, I just sort of form it into a little patty. When you're doing other things, you can squash them down, but don't squash these ones down because they don't, they'll go everywhere. Again, just doing that. You see how easy that was to put that together? You can actually do that the day before. Um, open your tin of salmon and just get your tin of salmon, leave it, take a little drain, um, and then put that in the fridge. Cut up, your, cut up your onion, cut up your parsley, and you're pretty good, okay? It's good to have, um, good to have your own fresh herbs. I always grow my own fresh herbs. Now also, too, be careful when you're cooking stuff like this. Make sure you, you, you're pretty safe. I always use a low flame, medium to low flame when I'm cooking. Why? Because I find a low flame's better. Put that in there, in my cupboard, in my fridge. When you're using things, always make sure you put them back after you finish. Like I've just put all my stuff away. Especially at summertime, that's how food poisoning can occur. If you're leaving things out, okay, you forget about it and just make sure you put them all away in the, in the cupboard after you finish. Right, and there we go. Salmon patties, look at that. Uh, didn't that take, didn't take us long, did it? Couple of seconds. Just takes a little bit of prep. Um, in the industry, I was, you know, I've, been, I've been working in the industry for only 40 years, and I've been working here for 10 years now, and I really love working here, it's great fun. I've always relied on making sure you organise, make sure you've got the right ingredients, you'll go a long way. Also too, there's a lot of um, recipes you can go to libraries, um, come to workshops like ours. Uh, <laughs> you can do all sorts of things. TV's a great one, is that SBS. They've got that many food shows on there. It's, it's fantastic, really good ones. And they show you nice, easy, easy ways how to cook, okay? Also, you can watch different ways and they'll show. My dad's 90 year old, he's watching how to cook as well. So what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to turn my frying pan on and get it nice and hot. Now talk about frying pans. Always get your frying pan nice and warm first. Don't ever cook in a cold frying pan. Why? Because once you cook in there, it'll stick. Okay? So just be careful when you, what's the name? Put it on a, on a I don't have it on a high flame. I've got it about a medium to low. You have a high flame on your stove, you will get spatter everywhere and you could burn yourself. And that's another thing, just be careful as well. Don't burn yourself. Working with, with hot stoves and that, just be careful guys, okay? So what I'm gonna do in a minute, I'm gonna grab some oil, a little bit of oil. I normally use a bit of veggie oil, not a lot. And I'm gonna go over here to the stove and I'm just gonna cook these patties up and show you how they're cooked up. They don't take long. Remember, this, the, the salmon's already, um, already done, it's already been cooked, basically, and the only thing you need to do is brown off your, um, your breadcrumbs. You don't need it really hot, and you don't really need it burnt away, okay? So let's, let's go to the stove, and we'll take my oil with me, 
and let's do a bit of cooking over it. Now I've just got me stove, me pan on. I don't put a lot of oil, right? Just a dribble, enough, just enough oil, just to keep just that cook. So it's a nice little, nice little bit of oil there in your in your pan. And you can see my flame; it's not that high. I make sure that I've got enough flame there to keep enough heat. Okay. I make sure I've got enough oil there as well. You don't want too much oil in your pan. Otherwise, you're going to get greasy, very greasy um, salmon patties. So I'm just now, how do I know it's getting hot? I can tell by that little bit there, about a couple of minutes on the stove. So I'm just going to add my thing. Don't squash them. So I'm just going to put them in. Now, the only problem you might have is if you don't put enough egg in, they might, they might burn. Or they might break up. If they break up, don't worry about it. You're not a connoisseur chef, so long as you, you can cook, put them all together and they're quite nice. You can also throw a bit of mashed potato. If you've got leftover mashed potato, that's good in there as well. Any roast pumpkin, all that sort of thing, fantastic. Okay, now I just leave them cook a bit there. I don't leave them for long, okay? Just leave them cook. I always leave them just cooked nicely. You don't want it cooking anymore and that comes out really, really nice. So just leave that there like that and just let them cook. And I'm just gonna wait for them to cook. Um, a little bit on just um, while they're cooking, uh, just a little bit on food poisoning. Just be careful again, guys, when you're using food. Um, always, like I said before, I repeated myself, make sure it's fresh. Um, check your use by dates, check your best before dates. Best before dates are great. You can always use it a couple of days after the date. When it comes to use by, especially with meat and milk and dairy and all that sort of thing, just be careful, okay? Because you can pick up a very bad bug, especially salmonella with chicken from eggs and chicken, and eggs and chicken, sorry. Um, you will get, um, you could get a very nasty um, food poisoning. So just be careful um, and you'll be okay. Use your food sparingly. Don't buy too much food, okay, and have enough. Healthy food is great. You can do anything healthy. Anything can be healthy. These are healthy. What I'm going to serve these with, I'm going to serve these with a nice um, little green salad with a bit of stuff in them and put a bit of mayo on them, okay? So that'll look really nice. And that's all you want because sometimes it just doesn't... Now you can see them just a little bit. I'm just... The way I'm just tipping that up and they're not breaking, okay? I'm just... I'm just... Just be careful and just flip them over there. You can use a fork, okay? But just a nice, and that's a beautiful golden colour there. And that's what you want. Uh, just something nice. They'll take their time. They might take about five or 10 minutes to cook. Okay, but, but just to me, it's just um, how you want them. I'm just setting them apart there. I might just put a little bit more oil, not much, just a dash, okay? And that's all I put in. And that's all I, I just want that sizzle. And you can see that sizzle happening there in that pan. And I'm just going to get a nice crust on them. Once I, you can put them in your oven at, after you finish them. You think, oh, that's still a bit, look, it's still a bit pale. You can put them in your oven and finish them off in your oven. That's up to you. So I don't. I just normally just put them in there and just finish them off that way. Just give them a little bit of a thing. And I'm actually happy they didn't break. Normally, sometimes when I do them, they break. <laughs> so I just keep my little thing there. Um, also with healthy food, anything's healthy. So long as you've got, you know, stir fries are great. Um, stir fries, you can buy the meat already uh, cut from the supermarkets and they've also got the vegetables. Talk about vegetables, this thing here, your freezer, it's fantastic. You've got frozen veggies in there, frozen peas, frozen corn. Um, they've got steam fresh today, you know, the steam fresh you buy, you put it in the microwave for a couple of minutes. Fantastic veggies for um, stir fries. Fantastic veggies for pies. Um, mince, great. Mince is a great one too. You can say versatile. Rissoles. You can make a little um, pies. You have a little savoury mince. You have a bit of um, bolognese. You can always turn down bolognese and savoury mince. Make a little pie. Put some potatoes in it. Put some mushies in it. Put some veggies in it. I'm just going to give them another bit of a turn because I can smell them now. They're smelling good. I hope you can smell them there because I can. And you see how nice and golden brown. They look fantastic. 
That one's a little bit, he needs a bit more, that one. And I always try, once I know they're okay, I just keep them together. And that's what I do there. Okay. So right, what I'm gonna do is, I've already pre-done some. So I just wanted to show you how to do them. I'm just gonna turn them off, and I'm just gonna show you some pre-done ones. I already cooked some before for you. Okay, so what I've got here is my little little salmon patties there. Look at that. Don't they look fantastic? All right. Now, normally two is a good serve. Okay, and there's four ears, you can have four. Okay, so that's quite nice. Just put him over there. I've got a bit of green salad. Now, this is quite good. Again, if you grow it, it's even better if you grow it. But sometimes, I don't know if some people grow this or not, maybe we do. Here at the centre we grow all our veggies, chemically free, and I go up there when I do my workshops and I pick up a lot of my veggies before I start my workshop. So this has got a bit of, um, I put a bit of carrot in there and I put a bit of uh, chopped up, um, what do you call that red stuff? Beetroot. So I've just got some there and I just, what I've got is just a bit of uh, sp uh, baby spinach and a little bit of, uh, little bit of lettuce. So you don't want much, just a little bit like that. That looks pretty good. Bit of mayonnaise. Now you can, can get the healthy mayonnaise. Always make sure when you've got the mayonnaise, you've got everything off. Look, I've got, still got the lid on that, look. Okay. That's good. It's always hard when you're trying to get mayonnaise out of a jar and you're trying to squeeze it and none's coming out. All I do now is just a little squeeze like that. You don't want a lot. That looks quite nice. And we'll finish it off with a nice lemon. Come out you. Nice piece of lemon. Okay, a little bit of parsley. I'm just doing this now. You don't have to do this, but I'm just doing it because I'm just used to doing that. And I put a little bit of parsley right in there. So, there we go. There's my um, salmon patties, nice and healthy and beautiful. Not much fat there, not much grease. Okay, good little summer thing for summer. Um, you can use fresh salmon if you've got, say if you go fishing and you catch a nice salmon, great. Um, any kind of fish is fantastic with that. Whatever you want to use, use it. Like I said before, um, bubble and squeak's great. Unreal. So how's that? You like that one? That's pretty good. I'll just put him there. And you'll notice how quick and easy these dishes are. What you need to do when you're working with dishes, you don't need to be, how can I say it? You don't want hours preparing because then it becomes boring. What you need, you want it to be what, I, what we call simple, simple food. Again, Use what you got the night before. Use what you had a couple of days ago. Another one of my favourites here is I like to do, and I love this, I love this one. It's my chicken bake. Okay. Come to a nice day, you know, and you've had a, you feel like a bit of roast chicken, okay? And you think, I might go and get myself a chicken. You can buy the half a chicken, and you can buy a quarter chicken. So what you do, I've got some really beautiful barbecue chicken. If you want to buy fresh chicken, you can. Uh, again, just make sure you, if you do buy fresh chicken, buy it and use it straight away. Okay, don't leave it sit in the fridge and forget it, because that's when you have problems. I've got some sliced mushroom here, and that's some really just button mushrooms that I've sliced up. I just got a handful and just chopped them up. And all I do with my mushrooms, uh, just me, just chop them up like that. Just chop them up like that, that's all. Just get out of the way. I just get a mushroom and just chop them up like that. And you get a nice sliced, a nice sliced mushroom. Right, so that's good there. Pasta. Now, I love my pasta. Um, I come from a Maltese background, it's fantastic. Uh, but I love my pasta, my pasta's my favorite thing. Pasta's the most easiest, versatile thing to use. 
I use this one, the elbows. Okay, elbows are great. Any kind of pasta is good, but these little ones are fantastic. Now, when you cook pasta off, follow the directions. My directions are pot of boiling water, a little bit of salt, okay? Let it come to the boil. Once it's come to the boil, throw in your, throw in your, noodle, your pasta and, when, and just keep checking it. When your pasta gets to a nice, a nice breakable pasta like that, that's ready, okay? Don't let it overcook. And I'd say about 10 to 15 minutes once it's boiled, after the pot's boiled. Let your pot boil. There's a fallacy about putting water in, uh, sorry, putting oil in your water. Um, don't, just use water and salt. Any kind of salt's good, but the best salt that I use, I use sea salt, but if you haven't got sea salt, normal salt's great too, okay? So whatever you wanna use, fantastic. And I got some cheese there, and I've gotta use some chicken stock. Now chicken stock, if you don't wanna make it, I just buy it, okay? You get it for cheaper. Um, I'm always using chicken stock here. I make my own when I do classes. I do make fresh one. Um, but here today, I'm just got little easy. They're nice and easy and they're really good. Uh, Messel and all that, but they're, fan they're versatile. They can sit in the fridge and they can even go in the freezer. You can put them into containers like that and freeze them up and you just need a little bit. Great for soups, great for stews, unreal. Um, you can get the little tiny ones, they're even better. Don't buy the little stock cubes. The little stock cubes are pretty uh, intense and can be too salty. This is fantastic. Okay, what I'm gonna do for you now is I'm going to cook these up for you. Now this is so easy. All I need to cook up is cook me mushrooms, okay? Once I get them cooking, chuck me, st chuck me stock in there. Then I'll throw my um, chicken in there, cook him up really good. And then I'll throw me noodles, whack a bit of cheese, whack a bit of cheese on top and put it in the oven. And that's what you got, your chicken bake. And that'll be nice. Again, it's nice and easy, versatile. Things you got, you'll have these things in your, in your cupboard, okay? Things you might have, like I said, pasta's always really nice. Rice, you can use rice in this. Um, couscous is another one, a favourite of mine. That's nice and healthy. Uh, if you're worried about healthy pasta, you can get spelt pasta, you can get brown pasta, wholemeal pasta. It's really good. A little bit of pasta doesn't hurt you anyway, it's quite good. Uh, don't worry about too much fats and all that. You've only got a little bit. And when you see me cooking, I don't put a lot of fat in my cooking anyway, okay? Right, so I'm gonna go over to the back over the stove. All right, yeah? And we're gonna finish off our little, right. Again, got me pot. I'm putting my stove on. Now, I don't have my flame on too high, okay? If you got gas, that's a good height of your gas, okay? Don't have it on too high. If you have it on too high, you'll burn everything and everything will just go yuck. I always cook it about, that's about, to me, that's medium low. You get a nice heat. Put your pan on. Just leave your pan on there and your pan will come nice and hot. If you're not sure how hot it is, don't put your hand in there and burn yourself. You'll just put your hand like that and you'll feel the heat coming from the pan. Again, I normally say about five minutes, okay? You got electricity, don't worry about it. Just turn it on the lowest of electricity. Again, put it on there, but always stay. Don't walk away. If you've got something on there, don't walk away. When you're cooking, please. If, you, if you're not, what's the name? Turn that off and go and do what you need to do, okay? Don't leave an open flame going. Even electric, even electricity, don't leave that going, please, because that can cause a lot of danger. Working with heat is very dangerous. Working with oil is very dangerous as well. And we don't want to get hurt, do we? Right, I'm just going to get all my ingredients. It's always good too to have all your ingredients prepared. And I've got them all there ready, as you can see. I just need to just chuck them all in and cook. And if you can do that, them little, them little containers are great too. Fantastic, you can buy them. Even the little, um, the little Chinese ones, you can buy them. When you're buying those ones, just make sure they're food safe, okay? Don't use the ones that are not food safe. How you know they're food safe? They've got a little fork and knife and a little glass on the bottom of the, um, uh, the container. You can also ask the lady at the shop or the gentleman at the shop. Always make sure that you um, find that out because if they're not food safe, you can get poisoned from that actual container. They, another thing is they don't go into a microwave. 
Just check that, make sure they're microwave safe as well if you've got a microwave. Okay, I just put a little bit of oil in there because I just need that little bit of oil. That's all I need, just that little bit of oil. I'm just going to knock him up a little bit just to give me a bit of flame, so I'll just heat that up. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can see a bit of smoke coming off there. What I want now is just a little bit of sizzle when I get in there. That's what I want. So what I normally, if I want to check, I just put that in. No, he's not ready yet. So we'll get him there. I'll just get him a bit more. Now we're just going to call that, what they call is sauteing the mushrooms off. That's all I'm going to do is saute the mushrooms. So I'm going to throw them in. I just use my spoon, okay? I'll give them a bit of flame. And I'm just going to get them nice and cool. With mushrooms, mushrooms will go to nothing. So if you buy 200 grams of mushrooms, you'll get about 100 grams when they're cooked. It's like with spinach. You get one bunch of spinach, and one bunch of spinach goes to about that much, okay? So you'll always get that. Same with mushies, always go down like that. So just be careful. So I'm just going to cook them up a little bit. You can probably, you'll hear that bit of sizzle going on there. Hear that little bit of sizzle. Now what I do with this now, I've just got a little bit of, you think to yourself, okay, how's he going to make it nice and thick? How's he going to make the sauce? How are you going to do that? Okay, that's when I got my stock comes in, right? That comes in there. And before that, I've got a bit of plain flour. You can use a bit of gravy powder, or the, or the grave ox, you can use a bit of that, but we use that very sparingly, just a tiny little bit, okay? I use a bit of plain flour, because in the cooking industry, we always use, we, what we, we make what we call a roux. A roux is basically butter and flour, okay? But what you do in that, need butter and flour. I just got a bit of oil. I'm just gonna put a little bit of flour there. And that should make enough for me sauce, okay? Just put a little bit more. Now don't worry about getting lumps or that into it, because I sift me flour and that's always good too, because sometimes your flour might have little pieces of it. Just sift it a little bit. I always make sure it's... Also, that's another thing too, be careful with flour too. Don't keep flour too long in the store, in your cupboard, because summertime you get the little weevils, and if you've got little black things swimming around your flour, chuck him out, don't use him. Um, I always say, if in doubt, throw it out. That's my little thing, that's our little motto. I'm just throwing a bit of stock in there, and now that'll make my, that'll make my sauce a bit. That'll, make, that'll start making my sauce, okay? And that's all I want. I might just need a little bit more flour in there just to make a little bit more. That's enough, I think, that's all, I won't do any more. Now all I'm doing is just swilling the pan around. Now as that starts to boil, that'll thicken up. I've got my stock here just in case I need a little bit more just to make sure I've got enough. Because sometimes it can be, you can put too much flour and it can be too thick and you'll, be, you'll get a bit massive like that. Good to have a bit of stock. If you run out of stock, a bit of water's all right. If you want to put a bit of white wine in this, you can. If you like a bit of white wine, that's okay, not a problem. Me chicken, I just break it up. Make sure you get all the bones out too, eh? I just put him in there, all nicely chopped up. Look at that, nice, really nice, okay? Looks really good. Again, if you wanna buy fresh chicken, the best chicken to buy is you can buy the, the, um, the chicken stir fry, which is already sliced up for you, and you just might have to cut it into little bits. Or you can buy the, um, the chicken thigh fillets, that's quite nice with the bone, with no bone and just cut them up into small little things. I'm just gonna, it's just a little bit thick there, so I'm just gonna throw a bit more stock in there. Cause I need it a little bit wet, because when I put my pasta in, okay, I'm just gonna put all that in there. Yes, it's good to have a recipe, but it's, sometimes it's best when, you, when you're a chef, it's, you gotta, we don't need recipes, okay? Cause our recipe book's all up in here. That's what an old chef told me once. Now all I'm gonna do, I don't need to boil that or nothing because again, your chicken's cooked, your mushroom's cooked, your pasta's cooked. Always make sure with your pasta, you cook it and strain it off. Now, a little hint on your pasta. You know your water in your pasta, okay? That's good, you're making a sauce, making a bolognese. So you got it there and you got your pasta boiling there, you got your sauce boiling there, making up there. 
Get a ladle full from your pasta into your sauce. You know what? You'll make a great sauce, okay? I always sometimes keep the water and I put it in one of these little containers or one of the little tiny ones. I keep it in my fridge. And when I'm making me nice pasta sauces, I use a bit of that, okay? Comes great. You'll be amazed what you can do. Don't be scared of cooking. It's, you know, cooking's easy. Can I tell you, probably some of you guys out there, you can cook better than me because I reckon, I always say, the best cooks and the best chefs are your mum, your auntie, your grandma and all that sort of thing. Um, and it's just, you know, they can cook the best. Right, I'm putting my elbows in. Now, you don't have to use elbows, but I find that a little tiny pasta like elbows are good because they're quite good, they're versatile, they're nice and easy. And also, how can I say, easy to eat, they look good. Whereas you can put spaghetti, but spaghetti's long. But these things are quite nice. Now, don't be scared if you've got something this big, you think, I've made too much. All right. That's where these come in handy, these little containers. You can always break them down. And I'll show you a couple of alfoil containers after and little Chinese containers. Put them in there, fit it, let it cool, put it in there, put a date, put a, what it is, put it in your freezer. Remember, three months only, okay? Not too much. Now, again, I don't want a lot. I don't want a lot of cooking. All I'm basically doing here is just getting my, my pasta just nice and hot, and it's nice and beautiful. See the chicken, it's all broken up, right? And while we're there, I'll just get around and just get my cheese. Cheddar cheese or sh shredded cheese is fantastic too. This will help to cook as well, okay? And just put it in and melts with it, makes a nice sauce. Look at that, fantastic. You can see how nice and sticky that cheese is. And that looks nice, basically like a macaroni cheese, okay? Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to my bench there and I'm gonna put this in a container. So I'll just bring him over here, turn my flame off. Always remember to turn your flame off when you finish. So, we've got our little pasta made up here. Right here. So what do I put it in? Okay. I was telling you before, these little alfoil containers are great. Fantastic little alfoil. You can buy them at Ronnie's or any $1 shop. Some of them come in a little lid, cardboard lid. Fantastic. If they do, just write on that what they are. They're great to go in the freezer too. So what you can do, you can probably do, I'm gonna show you actually. I'm gonna show you. You can probably mix them up here and just put a spoonful, okay? I've got cheese everywhere here and I put a bit of pasta in there, look at that. All right? Just make sure you got all chicken and you got all cheese and noodles in there. And you can see where the cheese, it looks like a big pizza, doesn't it? Like sticking all that. Another one. And I'm just gonna show you, because these are great, you can do this. You can make this up, this lot, this, to, um, this, amount of, um, this amount, right? And once you've done this amount, you can freeze it and go, okay, I've got a couple of dishes here, I've got enough meals now. I've got three dinners here. I've got three dinners here for the next, I can do one this week, I can do one next week, and I can do one, you know, maybe on the weekend. And yes, you're right, and all you gotta do, if you wanna thaw them out, you can thaw them out, or take them straight out of the freezer and put them straight in the oven, straight in the oven. They won't even worry about it. Little bit of cheese. And you don't have to cook these off, all right, if you don't want to. You can do these up like this. Now also with cheese, you can buy cheese that is um, low, low, low fat cheese and all that sort of stuff. And there you go, look at that. Really nice looking little chicken pasta bakes. And they're quite nice, they look quite beautiful, don't they? Now, what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you the finished product. Okay, we got them there. Just keep our thing there. And like I said, they're great to go straight into the, straight in, let them cool, okay? 
Now the thing is, I, during summertime, I allow for about 10 minutes because it's nice and hot. Like, we've been lucky this summer. This summer we haven't had a really hot summer. But when you've got your 40 degree days, don't leave them on the bench for no longer than say 15, 20 minutes at the most, especially with chicken. Can I say 10 minutes at the most? Remember they're there. Okay, once they're cool, you can put them straight in your fridge. Let them cool right off, then cover them up, or if you've got the little cardboard things that come with these things, cover them up, right on them, the date, okay, and put them in the freezer. And they'll last three months in your freezer, not a problem. You'll have a good, you've got, a, you've got three dinners there to last you for another thing. Same with your, mint, same with your um, salmon patties. They can go in your, freeze, in your freezer too once you've cooked them. Or if you want to make them up and just make them like we made them before and not cook them up, you can do that and just put them in a little container or wrap them in a bit of um, cling wrap or glad wrap or whatever you want to do or whatever you want to put them. Freezer bags are great. Ziploc bags are good. Again, write on them. Make sure you know. So when you go to your freezer, you go, oh, hang on, I might have some salmon patties. Pull them out, let them thaw, put them in your fridge. Let them thaw the night before. Tomorrow they come out and go, have me salmon patties, cook them up. One, you've made them, okay? Or you've worked hard one day, you might say, it's a rainy day, I'm gonna cook a whole lot of stuff up, okay? That's good too. So they can be frozen as well. And that's some nice meals there. But what I am gonna show you, I am gonna show you the pasta bake cooked. So let me get it out of the oven. Always be careful when you're getting stuff out of the oven too. Make sure you use your mitts and, or a tea towel. Don't try and be a hero and try and grab it with your hands because a burn's not really good, right? Okay, so I'm gonna get my spoon and I'm going to take some out and put it on the plate. Now this is, this is one little big dish. Okay, if there's two people, three people, that's a good little dish. One person, that's even better, right? Okay, like I said, I just done it just to show you what's you can do. If you're living by yourself um, and you just think, what can I cook? Okay, what can I do? These dishes I'm showing you now are just versatile dishes that you can do. Again, I'm showing you dishes that you can use, stuff you can use in your fridge and your cupboard and your freezer. So all I'm gonna do now is take me a bit of chicken out and it's got a really nice crust on it. And I tell you what, you can even invite some of your friends around, eh? Um, invite some of your friends around and go, come on, come and try me, um, come and try my chicken pasta bake, you know? And they'll look at you and they'll go, did you cook that? You'll go, yeah, look at that, it's all right, eh? Can serve that with a bit of grain. Normally, I don't serve pasta with, I don't serve pasta with um, salad, right? I come from a, um, I'm Aussie, Maltese, but the thing is, yeah, you've got a nice bit of salad, won't hurt. Uh, just a little bit of greenery on the side there, right? Doesn't hurt. You know what, that bit of greenery is a nice bit of, bit of um, nutrients. That's good for you too, hey? You're not getting a lot, and don't fill your plate up. To me, that's a nice meal, it may be a bit smaller, but that's enough for me, I'd eat that, right? I'd probably eat that whole thing, because I love that sort of thing. Again, I'm just gonna make it look nice because I just like to make things look nice. Okay, and then just put a little bit of parsley there. And there you have it, chicken pasta bake. How easy was that? And the steam's still coming off there, look at that. So there you go, I've made some two nice dishes. Now, the two dishes I've done for you, I'll just get them out of the way. Those two dishes that I've done, that one you can have at winter time. You can have it at summertime too, but I'm just saying winter time because winter time, that's nice. You know, it's really beautiful. Um, another thing you can do with that, you make a nice casserole, or say your daughter or your son or, you know, your daughter-in-law and that, makes you a nice, say, steak and kidney or a nice beef casserole. And you've got it there and you've had a little bit and you've got a little bit left over and you think, what am I going to do with that? Don't chuck it away. Boil up some pasta, chuck it in. Guess what? You've got a nice little dish. You've got some potatoes, chuck them in there. Or if you've got a bit of rice or a bit of couscous or whatever, fantastic. You're not going to make yourself overly what's-known, but 
It's good hearty food for winter. Yeah, you know, it's just really, really nice. And then salmon patties is a nice, to me that's summer because it's a light dish, it's nice, it's fresh, it's good for you. It's got all the GI in the fish and you've got a bit of, what's the name there, a bit of nice salad. You don't have to put the mayonnaise on them, okay? You don't, do not have to put the mayonnaise. So it's just what up, whatever you feel like. Coleslaw's good, but make sure if you want to, don't want to use a lot of coleslaw with um, too much mayonnaise, you can do it differently. The oil-based things are good. Balsamic vinegar is good as well. Okay, so do you enjoy those dishes I just done? Two nice, easy dishes. Now, I know you, I know you people out there love sweets. Okay, I love sweets. So, how can I make a sweet that's nice and versatile, nice and cheap, nice and easy, not too much stuff? Again, what are we using? Our cupboard, our fridge. Okay, that's what we're using. So I'm gonna make for you a nice apple crumble. Now you're probably saying, apple crumble, yeah, that's pretty easy, I can do that. Okay, I know you can do it, it's nice and easy, no problem. What do you need for apple crumble? You could probably tell me if you were here. Oh, we're using apples, eh? But guess what? You might have a tin of peaches in the cupboard. You might have um, pears, you might have fresh pears, you might have fresh strawberries. Whatever fruit you got, this goes well with that. Banana goes well with that. You know what? Apple and banana. Oh yeah, very nice. Um, pear and apple, figs and apple. You name it. It's a it's a it's a wide spectrum of different fruits. You can make a mixed fruit one. Okay, no problems. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. We don't have to go the old boring uh, apple crumble. But I'm going to go to boring apple crumble now because. We're just, I'm just going to show you the apple crumble. You know how to make it, but I'm going to do a different apple crumble to what you make, okay? I'll just get a bowl from here, little bowl. So I got me apple. So how to make me crumble, okay? Oh, it's quite easy. You need some butter, don't you? So I've got some metal butter over here. Melted butter, quite nice. Now, can I tell you, apple crumble, well, you know this too. Apple crumble, you need butter. Don't use margarine, use butter. Butter's the best one because it gives it nice flavour. If you want to use the unsalted butter, yeah, fine, fantastic, no worries. Now, normally you've got plain flour. So I'm just going to do a couple of bits of plain flour, okay? I'm making a small one. Again, I'm just going to show you the little tiny one. But I've got a surprise for you in the oven, okay? So a little bit of that, that'll be enough for that. I might just go one more, all right? A little bit of brown sugar. Brown sugar's good. If you haven't got brown sugar, a bit of white sugar's good. If you really, really want to, you can put some stevia or a sweetener in it. It's up to you. Won't hurt it. A couple of spoonfuls of that. Now, my secret little thing. Porridge oats, oats. Fantastic, look at that. I got some oats, okay? Now these are instant ones. So all I do with that is just take them out of the packet and I've just mixed them up there because I use them a lot. I put a, about two good, two and a half good spoons of that, right? And all I do is just mix them up, mix them all in there, get that all nice and mixed up. Now also too, if you really want to, you can use almond meal, hazelnut meal, um, whatever you want to use if you like, if you're gluten free, um, harm, almond meal's good, hazelnut meal's good, um, things that are gluten free for you, you know, things like that, great, you can use that, whatever you want to use. It's so versatile. Again, a recipe to me is just something that, it's a formula. So before I mix, me, mix it up, I just got me a bit of apple here and I just, I used a pie apple. And I don't put any sugar in. Why? Because you've got the sugar in there and you don't want it too sweet. And you might serve this with a bit of, um, uh, I'm going to serve it with a bit of yogurt. Yogurt's nice. If you don't want to use plain yogurt, you can buy the little tubs of the um, flavoured yogurt. Fantastic. That's your sugar hit. Okay. So, okay, righty -o, whack him in there. Now, as much apple as you want, I'm just going to put, say, that'll be enough, I think. That'll keep me going. How's that? Because you like a bit of apple. I like a bit of apple and I like some um, pies and stuff like that. So I just smooth my apple out. That's all I do. 
you know what? I'm really, I really would love the old, the old dishes coming back that I used to have. You know, the steak Diane's, the apple crumbles, um, all that sort of thing. Quite nice. I wish they'd bring all that back. They are bringing some back, and it's quite good. Tell you another little thing you can experiment with too. Um, bush tucker spices. I, I do a bush tucker class here, workshop, and if I was making this bush tucker, I'd put a bit of wattle seed in there, a bit of lemon myrtle in there. It's quite good, okay? So I'm just mixing me a little bit of um, crumble. Probably need just a little bit more flour. So I think I just put a bit more flour and a bit more oats just to give it a bit. I add more oats than flour because the flour can be a bit heavy. And again, you don't have to put flour if you're um, gluten free, right? You don't need the flour. You can mix this with your hands. But at the moment, I don't think it's good mixing it with your hands. I'm just going to show you with a spoon. But if you're at home, mix it with your hands. You get the feel of it, all that crumbs. Okay. That's me um, crumble mix there. Look how nice that is. That's really, really good. I like that. Also, too, if you want to, actually, I'm just going to put a little thing. I've got a little secret that I like to do. I always keep um, dried fruit. So, handful of dried fruit, and that's a mixture of cranberries, um, raisins, and um, sultanas. I just put that little bit on top of that. I just put that little bit on there. That's quite good. That's quite, it adds a good bit of flavour. Right? Yeah, that's good. And then just put your crumble mix on. How easy is that? Again, you can make this the day before. And you're saying, how can I make it the day before? Make this up. Um, you can make your crumble up, put it in the fridge, or keep it in your cupboard, okay? Just put it there, no worries, done. Just gonna put a bit more, I like a bit of crumble, quite nice. So I'm gonna keep that there because I'm gonna probably make another one later on. And I just, just make sure I cover it all up. Now I got my oven turned on to about 180. 180 I find is a good, a good degree, my oven. When you're using your oven, just don't use it for one thing. You can probably put that in there. Remember the pasta bake we made? Put that in at the same time. You're, you're cooking your salmon patties, throw them in there. You might have a bit of fish, you might think, I've got that bit of fish, there. I might cook that for dinner tonight. Whack that in. You can throw so many, fill your oven up, guess what, you save, you save on energy on, your, on your, your bills as well. Just, because I know in the old days, my mum used to do the cake and then she took it down and then she put the roast in. Those days are gone. Okay, there's me crumble. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? But that's the one that's cooked, uncooked. I've got one that's cooked and I'm gonna get him out. And you're probably saying, wow. And there's the cooked one, but I better take it on a bit of tea towel. It's a bit hot. And there's me cooked one, look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Looks fantastic, nice golden crumbs on it. You're probably looking at about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe. Just in 180 degrees. I'd say about 15 minutes. Depending on your oven. If your oven's um, an old oven, 20 minutes. An uh, electric oven, 20 minutes. But a nice gas oven, I reckon about 15 minutes. And you've got it really, really nice. My little secret is too, which I always do, when you're putting things like this in the oven, use a tray. You know why? Because you might pull that out of the oven, you might drop it. One, it might fall on your arms, you burn your what's name. Your arms are really bad. Put it on a tray like that and put it in the oven there. That way, when you get it out, you use your mitts or your tea towel and you put them out. You bring him out here and you've got him there. Safe. Always think of safety first, okay? Working with food, it's, I know you enjoy it. I love cooking and I know you do too, but always be, always be mindful of what you're doing. If you get distracted, get distracted, stop what you're doing, move it away, turn it off and that, and go and do what you've got to do, then come back. Because you don't want to have any danger, anything dangerous. Right. I'm going to serve it up. Just clean up your little spoon. And I'm just going to serve it up for you. Now, I always serve it up in little pieces. All right? That looks nice. Apple crumble to me is really one of the best things 
People love it. It's an old favourite. Even the kids love it too. Your grandkids could come over and say, oh, you know, can I have some other apple crumble you made? The apple crumble I remember my grandma used to make, I still remember it. Yeah. You know? It's something that I'll always remember. And remember one thing with food. Food always takes you back to somewhere else. As soon as you eat it, you always remember something. A bit of deja vu. Ah, there it is. Go under the wrong fridge. Again, a little bit of yogurt. I'm just using some nice Greek style yogurt. And I just put it on top like that. That's all I do. Okay. You might have a bit of fruit. Um, I've got a bit of chopped apple here. Here it is. If you chop it up apple, put a bit of lemon juice in it and a bit of water. Okay. Right, I just got a bit of chopped apple and a bit like that. That looks nice. And also what looks good on there is a bit of mint. And I just do a bit of decorating because I like decorating. I'm a chef and I just like doing it. I put a bit of maple syrup around and when I open it, I can open it. Just a bit of maple syrup. How's that? Keep my plate nice and clean. And there you have it. Baked apple crumble. And it's quite nice and easy. Apple crumble, you can buy the apple in the... Um, in the shop, in the can. But if you grow apples, or you get apples, or you buy fresh apples, you know how to stew apples, don't you? It's quite easy. Peel them, take the core out of them, put them in the pot, a little bit of water, a little bit of sugar, you don't want a lot, and just stew them right down. But why should I tell you that? Because you can cook that, I know you can. I guarantee if I got you in my kitchen here, you could do that. Um, I would be proud of what you do. Don't um, not be proud, you know, you can do it. And you can show us a few things too. So that looks nice, that looks good. If I had a bit of mint now, it'd be really nice. A bit of mint would look good on top of that. Even a bit of strawberry on the side, a bit of fresh strawberry would be even better. So that's my little, um, that little dish. Now I've got one more dish for you. And then I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a break then. Okay, I'm gonna make you a nice um, sultana and I'm gonna use some rice pudding. You can make rice pudding, okay? And I'm going to also use a bit of um, apple as well. I've got some apple there. I've got some almond there. Always make sure. One thing be careful of too. Today when you've got your grandkids, make sure that they can not peanut, haven't got peanut allergy. Make sure you haven't got peanut allergies before you give it to anyone. Just check before you watch them. Because you don't want to give someone peanuts and all of a sudden you go, oh, wow, you know? You'll be like, you know, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, I better use a, I'll use that bowl. That bowl looks nice. Now, all I do with this is I got my, you can buy this tin of, if you don't want to make it, it's better to make it, um, but you can buy the tins of cream rice. Any of the, of the um, supermarkets sell them. And I'll tell you what, they are quite nice too, and they're very nice. Sometimes I just have it, I have a bit of fruit with it, and it's really good. I had that and I sit there and watch telly and I really enjoy that, watching it, watching TV with my little bowl of rice. I put a bit of sultanas and cranberries and all that sort of thing in there just to give it a bit of body. Stir all that in, okay. Now, because it's a really thick thing, I've got some orange juice. I just pour a bit of orange juice in there. You're probably thinking, what's he doing orange juice for? Okay? That adds a bit of flavour to your rice. You got fresh oranges? Fresh oranges are even good. I got a bit of apple, which I'm going to throw in there. Bit of fresh apple, chopped up apple, which is sitting in lemon and water. Okay? If you don't sit it in lemon and water, it's going to go black on you and you lose your apple. If you got some of the stewed apple left over from your, um, your crumble, that's even good. Now, it's a bit loose, all right? Now this one, oats, come in great. A couple of spoons of oats, all right? Now that gives it a bit of body. 
Now this would be good. Both these, both these recipes would be great for winter or summer. They're versatile recipes. Okay. Right. That's it all there. You might think, oh, it looks terrible, right? But I put that in the fridge, but I made one yesterday. And it's already done up and it's already thickened up because the, the, um, the oats will swell and be um, nice and thick, like a burst of muesli. So this one you'll have to make a day before, but it doesn't take long, you can do it, okay? So, I've already made one up, but I'm gonna show you anyway how to do it. Come here, you. All right. So that's my little one there that I've made, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do and how I did it. Okay, so all I do, again, it's up to you. If you've got people coming, your friends, you know, or whatever, you just cut a couple of spoons of that in. Right, and also I might chuck a bit of, I've got some fruit here, I've got some nice tin fruit, right, put a bit of tin fruit on, but leave a little bit extra so you can put it on top, and put another bit on top of that. Then I'll finish it off. Yogurt comes in handy. Creme fraiche is good, um, mascarpone is nice. Bit of cream cheese is nice. Okay, just put him on top. I'm doing it different to that one. Bit of yogurt. Put him there for a moment. Better put him in the fridge. I don't want to leave him out. And I've got me a little bit of fruit left over. Always use up what you got. Then I'll just drain all that fruit off. Should I put some apple in that one? I just drain all that juice off and then put it on top like that. Look at that. Isn't that great? And then, a bit of nuts. I got some slithered almonds. A bit of slithered almonds. Now also what would be good on that, a cherry or a nice raspberry, bit of, a bit of raspberry or blueberries or a nice strawberry. And there's your little, there's your little dessert. Okay, now there's your two good desserts. That are really easy. They didn't take long, did they? They only took a few minutes to make. Again, what have we got in the fridge? What have we got in the cupboard? Okay, so I think I've done enough cooking now for you there. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'd like to say, I hope you like to follow these recipes. Um, they're really easy. You can do it, I know you can. I'd just like to say thank you for watching the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching what I did. Um, I just like to say thank you and happy cooking, eh? Take care and look after yourselves. See ya.